The Digimon card game has gone through many evolutions. I've talked about colors. I've talked about special Digivolution boxes. But is the design of delay moving to something else? Are items going to be the next big thing? In previous videos I've made on this topic, I hypothesized that we would have a brand new type of card. But Bandai seems to be adamant on maintaining the card types Digitama, Digimon, Options, and Tamers. The narrative of today's video is going to look at how items are likely going to be incorporated into option cards. Because with recent EX7 reveals, this is a very possible thing. But where does this all start? Option cards are part of the four main classifications of Digimon cards in the Digimon card game. And while other card games have created newer cards for their method of power creep, Digimon has stayed within these guidelines for the last four years. The earliest form of option cards were predominantly classified as two types of cards in my mind. Modifiers to Digimon in the form of stuns, increasing security checks, and decreasing security checks, while the other type was simply removal. The only exception to this was Hammer Spark. Later option cards in purple would also incorporate recursion with Night Raid, while pseudo removal cards like Digivol would also become present. But the first delay option cards would not make appearances until the starter decks 7 and 8, with the release of Gallantmon and Ol4 starter decks. Both of these decks would release the memory boost option cards, which would provide improved consistency for decks and also delay for 2 memory on a later turn. Delay has, and become very useful throughout the Digimon card game, even enough to warrant restrictions for one of them in the form of reinforcing memory boost. And while later sets in BT7, BT8, and BT10 would later implement additional memory boost delay option cards, prior to BT10 in the starter decks of Ragna Lordmon and Jessmon, they would introduce newer ones that weren't anything like the previous delay option cards. Jessmon's starter deck would introduce from Master to Disciple, a simple two-cost red option card that would provide an amazing surge in trash setup for the deck. But unfortunately, Ragna Lordmon's delay would not see considerable play, considering the ultimate problem for this option card came in the form of being dual color. Honestly, it should have been playable ignoring its color requirements if you had a Digimon with a Legend Arms trait in play. But it wasn't meant to be. That being said, the effect would have been hella strong if that was the case. On the other hand, Jessmon's option card would allow for a Digivolution reduction of one memory when you Digivolve next time on your turn, making it in some ways superior to the training option cards which require you to immediately Digivolve. Pretty interesting, because Ragna Lordmon's option card would just let you glean information at the top of the deck and bottom deck them or leave them at the top. While true this option can play a Digimon with a Legend Arms traits, and a cost of 7 or less, the requirement of a black and red source made it very difficult to justify. Moving into EX3 and beyond, this is where delay options would significantly change what delay effects would do. Memory? Cost reduction? Nah. We're going to start playing Digimon. EX3 would introduce the first delay effect that would play a Digimon, being the trial of the four great dragons. And while this deck would live in meme tier for the most part, Significant decks that would obtain this ability weren't just limited to the Royal Knights or Leviamon, but even Machindramon, Myotismon, and with the next set, Digipolice and Fenrir Lugamon. With BT17, these options would take an additional spin in the form of when certain Digimon would be deleted, or even leave the battle area, with the scramble cards being pseudo wider building board cards. And as much as you may have felt I rambled about these different types of delays, what is the ultimate goal here? What am I building up to? EX7 spoilers are the main reason why I started thinking about this as a possibility for item cards. Because with the new 3 Musketeer support, granted these aren't delay option cards, they do take from the X Anybody option card in equipping them as additional inheritables. I've talked about items in the past being a potential type of card, but as cool as that would be, I honestly can't see Bandai bringing about a new type of card for a game that has been sitting on 4 types. Once again, reiterating Digitama, Digimon, Options, and Tamers. But how does one implement these items? For the bulk of the remainder of this video, I discuss cards that were for the most part from the animated series of Digimon Tamers, because this was honestly 
my favorite season of Digimon. While we do see numerous plugin options already in the game, I believe this could be one way to implement the use of Digimon item cards. For example, do you remember when Terriermon used WarGreymon's shield? Despite having Brave Shield all the way back in the BT1, could it be possible that Bandai prints a new option card by the same name? Picture this. Brave Shield, Black Option Card, Cost of 2. While you have a Digimon in play, you may use this card without meeting the color requirement. Sounds familiar, right? Kind of like a Tamer-esque plug-in card. Main? One of your Digimon gets reboot and cannot be DP reduced or returned to the hand or deck until the end of your opponent's turn. Then place this card into your battle area. But why? Overall, this card is to mainly prevent one of your bodies from leaving play, and simultaneously acts as a way to redirect attacks. Because when your opponent attacks next time, you can delay and redirect the attack to one of your Digimon. It's not blocker, so it does get around unblockable. And this is just one example. The last two of course are going to be some fan favorites. Grani, for example, is the Steed of Gallantmon. And despite having 17 core sets, we still haven't seen this as a card. Potentially, could this have been a Digimon? Probably, considering we do have cards like the D-Reaper cards. But as a red option card, it does one thing. It transports things for its main effect by returning one Digimon card from trash to hand, and if it's trash from the top of the deck, place it into the battle area. Your turn. When you Digivolve into a Digimon with Gallantmon in its name, delay, place this card as that Digimon's bottom Digivolution source. This is yet another option card that takes from elements of X-Antibody, Protoform, and the new Three Musketeer option cards. Because with the Inheritable, I've made it flavorful to the point for that when your Gallantmon leaves play, you get a slap Crimson Mode into the battlefield for free. With Crimson Mode Ace, kind of valid. But the last card I want to go over comes in the form of Mako's Toy. Honestly, this was one of the coolest moments of the show when Impmon started sprinting towards the battle in the finale. And what better way to add support cards for Beelzemon decks? This proposed option looks at the main effect that deletes one of your opponent's level 3 Digimon. And while it's not much, it is for a cost of 2. However, when this card is trashed from the deck, you may return one Digimon with Impmon or Beelzemon in its name from your trash to your hand but its best elements comes in the form of the trash in which when your Digimon with Beelzemon in its name attacks, you may return this card to the bottom of the deck in order to Digivolve into a Digimon with Blast Mode in its name without paying the cost from the trash. This allows you to further recycle elements of the deck while they're in the trash. And while you may think some of these cards are too powerful or not synergistic, a lot of the time I come up with these types of cards, it's mainly for the flavor. But generally, as Digimon continues to progress with new effects, delays, and converting option cards into inheritables, do you think item cards are becoming more of a reality? And would you love to see more stylized cards from the Hyper Coliseum, or even Digimon Tamers? Let me know your thoughts, as this week winds down to some good old potential BT16 box openings, and of course, a break to recoup. But most of all, thank you all for your support. This is Digipanda, logging out.